So Bismillah, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Uh, it's my intention to make it my sunnah that uh, I um, do a, a session with Dr. Omar every Tuesday, inshallah ta'ala. So those of you that are, uh, you know, always listening to Dr. Omar can be on the lookout for those episodes, inshallah, every Tuesday is when I will upload them and do them with Dr. Omar. Uh, having said that, Bismillah, Alhamdulillah, wa salat wa salam ala Sayyid al Mursaleen Muhammad al Amin Amma Bad. So, Dr. Omar, welcome. Thank you so much for uh, joining me again. And inshallah, I pray to Allah that we have so many sessions with you that, uh, that you know, that, and that Allah uses those sessions for His will. Uh, Amen. I mean, so ultimately, that's that's what we would like. Okay, so I'm going to talk about. Uh, I want to start off talking about manhood, and mm -hmm. the way I want to start off talking about it is because I went on a camping trip recently, uh -huh. and I've been talking about this in some of my talks recently too. I went on a camping trip, and a lot of interesting observations came to my mind. I want to share some of them with you and get your okay. reflections on my reflections and maybe I can further refine my thoughts. Sure. Right. And this is how a teacher teaches someone, right? The student says, sure. uh, this is what I'm thinking. And the teacher says, yeah, you know, you can refine this. Uh, yeah. <laughs> this right? is, it's a conversation and discourse. Yes, of course. Yeah. So in the camping, the word for man in Quran is Rijal. And the word, the root word of the word rijal means feet or to walk. Mm -hmm. And uh, that, I always thought of that as, as you know, when, in, in, when we study in anthropology or in biology, the, the, the very key feature of man was that he was, homo, he was part of Homo erectus, right? That we mm -hmm. started, it was a species that was walking on its feet. And uh, so, you know, rijal means he's on his feet. But the other thing I realized uh, as I was in this camping place is that men have to do a lot of walking when they're not in the city mm -hmm. because you know you have to walk to get the firewood you have to walk to get the food you have to walk I mean you're always walking and then I was thinking about this and I was thinking about all the prophets walked so much yes like prophet Ibrahim walked so much prophet Adam walked till he found Hawa again Prophet knew he has to build a boat. He's going to the tree, cutting the tree, coming back, building the boat, going. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of walking. And then, yeah, of course, yeah. Prophet Ibrahim, we know he made a whole. Prophet Jesus was always going from one city to another city to another city. Yes, yes. Always constantly on the walk. Mm -hmm. And so my question was to you, as I'm thinking about this, what does walking have to do with manhood? Oh, oh, yeah. Over here, I want to mention something mm -hmm. that was interesting that came to my mind. Men are men, meaning the men who are on two feet, rijal, the same word, are caretakers of women. Mm -hmm. And the word for caretakers, qawwam, which is the same meaning when we say qad qamat as salah, to stand up for prayers. Yes. Okay? Mm -hmm. And so, uh, what comes to your mind in regards to manhood and I guess standing up or walking? Uh, how are, does something come to your mind in terms of archetypes or yes. let me see what you have to say? Yes, it's, um, it's important and very significant that you bring this up because uh, we are the one creature on the face of the earth that is upright on two feet and um, this walking business has to do with everything that is meaningful about our experience here as we walk the earth because we we walk in order to seek not just what we need but we walk in order to seek and fulfill meaningful companionship mm -hmm. and the first most uh, meaningful companionship is the companionship that we have with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mm. I mean, he created us in order to have a companion. Mm. That is what uh, some of the greatest scholars have uh, 
have ascertained, hmm. you know, in their contemplations and their tafakur on the topic of creation. You know, everybody, every kid, uh, you know, wants to know, well, why did God create us? Well, it looks like God was uh, a bit lonely. Uh, he wanted someone to talk to. And he wanted someone who was worthy of having a conversation with him. And there was no one worthy of having a conversation with him. Now, that puts us in a, a very interesting mindset because you have to think, well, man was certainly not the first creature created. So, you know, what is all this about? Well, you know, Allah created all these things and he didn't find some creature that was worthy of his companionship. Hmm. And um, why does Allah, does he need a companion? No, but Allah wants to show himself uh, as he is. And there was no one to show himself to. So no one who would be able to appreciate uh, who he was. I mean, so, yeah, the, the, it, 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 so th this has to do with identity because our identity as a man is tied in with this intimate companionship. And that intimacy is directly reflected in our intimacy with, the, with our wives. That yeah. is why uh, marriage was established. Because if it's not good for man to be alone, perhaps uh, Allah wanted to improve his own situation, you see, and his own circumstance. Now, I don't want to speak blasphemy here because I know Allah doesn't need anything. But as you're a trying creature, to make a point, you're trying to make a I'm point at, to, a human, at, at a human level. Yeah. But that I reminds mean, me of the saying of the sure. prophet in which the prophet says, Kuntu kanzun. Allah said, I was a treasure. Yeah. And I want to be known. And so I yeah, created I want to be known. That's right. It's, it's, it's almost as if all of the other creatures could not know him in the manner in which he wanted to be known. Hmm. So uh, that's saying something. And uh, that, in, that, that, that instills a sense of higher purpose in the whole concept of what it means to be a man, the whole concept of manhood. Manhood uh, means to have a relationship with God. If you don't have a relationship with God, you cannot fulfill the man, your manhood. Mm. Now, uh, if people think, some men think, well, you know, you've got to have a relationship with your wife in order to do that. And there's, a, there's an element of truth there. And it's a reality because the intimacy that we have with our wife is a reflection of the intimacy that Allah wants to have with both men and women. Mm. That's why he refers to uh, many ummas as my son, my daughter, my spouse. Uh, you know, my firstborn mm -hmm. in Al Torah. Now, this has nothing to do with uh, uh, with fatherhood. It has everything to do with relation. It's just an allegorical term. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean literally, and that's a, that's a mistake that everybody makes. The Christians and the Jews have made that mistake, and the the the, the Muslims get awfully upset. You know, when you, you you refer to these allegories, but the allegories refer to intimacy and mm. meaningful relationship. Mm. So to be a man uh, essentially means to have a meaningful relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mm. Now let's take this another step further. What's the first thing that, uh, that happens when you uh, sort of enter a new uh, group of people? Say you come into a new town and um, uh, nobody knows you, you're a stranger. And uh, what, what people want to know is they, they want to know who you are and who you're with and mm. what do you do, mm. okay? So, I mean, these are, these are three very important questions that mm. are on uh, the mind of everyone who, who, who meets a stranger mm. uh, because, well, there's several reasons for it, but let's just, it's all implied in the, the typical British greeting, which is, how do you do what? And my childish response to that is, well, 
this is what I do. <laughs> I'm a doctor, I'm a writer, I'm a husband, I'm a this, I'm a that. I've been this, I've been there. And I'm now with so-and-so, this is my wife and I'm working for, you know. So the, the question, the question, how do you do is, is a kind of polite thing, but the, the real implication here is how do you do what? Where do you do it? Who do you do it with? Why do you do it? <laughs> <laughs> All of these things are implied, yeah. you see. Yeah. Um, it, it's a kind of a, you know, a silent a subliminal uh, query. So manhood means to have purpose. And without purpose, you, you, you cannot uh, fulfill your manhood. Mm. And there, you know, the, the prophet made it very, very clear that the, the, the dean begins with marriage. And it's half the dean. And if you're not married, you, you can't be uh, my disciple. Um, this is the prophetic sunnah. It's always been the prophetic sunnah. Mm. And it is the sunnah of Allah, because Allah is always looking for a similar relationship mm. after the fall of um, Adam, even in the earth, you see. Uh, I, I look at earth as a kind of a prison, you know, and mm. uh, also a kind of a, 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 I don't like Alex Jones too much, but he's right about it being a prison planet. Prison We're planet. A, yeah, <laughs> that's what it is. Yeah. And we can't, we can't get off here unless we, uh, uh, you know, die. And uh, that's part of the curse. And um, that's the first death. And then what we're worried about, you see, essentially, is the second death. Well, the mm. second death is the loss of Allah's companionship. Mm. <laughs> you see, uh, right now here on earth, everyone has uh, grace from Allah, but not everyone has companionship. Mm. And um, what the saints are most uh, concerned about is the loss of that companionship. Uh, and everyone, you know, everyone who thinks about these things constantly, we don't want the loss of God's Allah's grace either. So mm. companionship has to do with walking. Hmm. You see, because as That's we so walk, interesting, because yeah. Prophet Ibrahim is quoted in the Quran that when he was, I guess, in the era, area of Iraq where he was originally, where the idols and everything was, yes, when yes. he decided, I'm leaving this place. Mm -hmm. He uses the word inni zahibun ila rabbi sayahdin. I'm going. Zahib means to leave. I'm to walk, right? To walk yes, out. Yes. So yes. It, it, I mean, it literally mean the literal meaning is. I am the Hibun. I'm leaving. I'm leaving. I'm leaving to my Rob. Yes. Meaning I'm going yes. to my Rob. I'm going to my Rob. Rabbi, Sayahdin, yes. And he will guide me. So this yes. idea of like walking with God. So to say. Yes. Almost. That's it. Uh, and it, you you find this in the scriptures in Al Turat uh, in several places, and I'm sure you have references to it in the Quran as well. Um, uh, you know, Enoch is another reference, and they say uh, Enoch was such and such, and then uh, God took him, and he was walking with God, walking no. with God, companionship. And there's you another see, verse of Quran where Allah says, "Fafiru ilallah." Firar mm -hmm. means to run away, but over here it's run away to Allah, like yes. he's your escape, right? Yes, yes, yeah. Fafiru ilallah. Yeah, there's also there's also the, an element of um, of um, uh, the concept of uh, return, mm. you see, when you think yes, about yes, the, yes, pro yes. The, the prodigal, yes. the prodigal son, this is a story about, you know, you can, you can say, well, okay, you have a father and you have a son who, you know, goes out and ruins himself and then comes home. Well, that's what man does. You see, we go out, we ruin ourselves if we don't have companion with uh, companionship with Allah. And then when we come to our senses, this is the term in the in, in uh, uh, Torah, the story here, we come, he came to his senses and he went home to his father. Mm. And now the term father also can be translated as creator, you see. So the story, or the allegory, or the, the, and the purpose of the story is, say, well, you know, we get our, uh, uh, for our fulfillment of purpose and the fulfillment of our destiny when we return to Allah. And mm. that, that can be uh, seen and represented here on earth. It also is a representative of, of, uh, of a greater imagination in the next uh, life, in hereafter, you see, because uh, no, no eye has seen, no ear has heard the, the, the wonders that Allah has prepared for us in paradise. And that's the true coming home. 
See, and uh, Earth is not our a home, as it were. It's a temporary sort of uh, testing ground or school or prison planet, you know, this, this sort of thing. And we all, we're all here to learn these lessons. And it doesn't matter what persuasion you are, the same lesson is learned over and over again, no matter what the religion, no matter what the, the faith, no matter the philosophy, the principles are all the same. The archetype is all the same. What, what is most is sacred in our, 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 our life of community is the, is the home mm -hmm. and the hearth fire, the fire in the kitchen, you see, where we are fed, where we eat, where the family gathers and shares meals and all this sort of thing. And this is all connected with the family life and this is all connected in, in, with intimacy that is that begins with the relationship we have with our wives. And Allah created that relationship so that we can, as men and as women, mature. The whole purpose of this is to mature, but not just to become physically mature, but to become spiritually mature and hmm. come to our senses and realize that this bed that we've made, this home that we've made, this fire, this hearth that we're um, uh, protecting, this is, an, this is a, 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 a um, manifestation of Allah's love for us and our love for him, because we can't keep it, we can't protect it, we can't maintain its dominion unless he guides us. So this is why, this is why Ibrahim, you said, I'm going to meet my Rob because all these creatures around here, they're not having relationship with Rob, with my Rob. They got a Rob, but it ain't my Rob. Okay, <laughs> so I'm I'm going out there. I'm going to go meet him because I don't want these people to be, keep on uh, being vampire spirits because they're taking everything from me, and I'm I, I'm finished with them. You see, Hanala, so, I was I just it struck me, you know, yes, Alex yes. Jones Prison Planet, mm -hmm. that the Prophet actually mentioned it before him. The he same did, word. Did he? <laughs> the dunya sijnul mu'min the dunya the world is a prison for the believer yes it is yeah literally so. jannatul kafir and this is the mm -hmm. home of the disbeliever yes. so it, it, indirectly the prophet said it a dunya sijnul yeah. mu'min the dunya is a mm -hmm. prison planet for yeah. believer and right the so that's so interesting the, the, the disbeliever thinks it's his home and you know then you've got people like elon musk out there they want to go find another home you know mars or whatever <laughs> and um you know so they're on their delusions but the believer knows that he's imprisoned here until the next transformation you see until until death and this is why uh, uh, the prophet blessings and peace be upon him said die before you die because when you die before you die, then you are already in your mind and in your heart, you're already there in the hereafter, you mm -hmm. see. So death here means nothing to you. And um, so this tells you what's really happening uh, to people who are going around, running around fearing COVID. They haven't died before they died, mm -hmm. you see. They're just pretending to be Muslims. They haven't accepted Islam. Well, they've accepted Islam, but they haven't accepted it in spirit and in truth and in deed. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, one of my students, one of my colleagues just wrote to me and said, oh, man, my God, they're setting up vaccines programs in the uh, masjid. And I yeah, said, well, are. <laughs> yeah, well are these, these, are, these are people who, they're like the desert Arabs, you see, when, uh, when Islam was finally established. Uh, you know they've they've accepted it, but it's not in their heart. Mm. It's just it's just an idea. It's not real yet. Mm. The Alawiya, on the other hand, Islam is real for them. Mm. The the people that uh, uh, Sheikh Jilani writes about in the unseen uh, unseen world, uh, these people he writes about, they know. Mm what guidance is they know what true guidance is they mm. have this relationship they actually walk with god here on earth and it's not because you know they're transcending themselves and they're on some flying carpet it's because in their heart and in their contemplations and in their prayer they have ascended they have gone uh returned already they have died 
you see, already. And because Allah has seen that, he then has run to them. Mm. Because Ibrahim ran to his Rab, mm. his Rab ran to him. Yes, right. Like this is, and what, what, what do we call the Aluiya? We call them the friend of God. Right. <laughs> this is what Jalani says in, in his writing. And when I, when I read that book, I'm still reading it. It, it's, it takes a while to get, to, to get through it, to, to really grasp it. And I'm saying, oh my God, he's calling me a friend of God. I said, mm. yeah, well, you know, that's, that makes sense because I used to talk to God when I was a Christian as mm. if he was sitting on my shoulder and my closest friend. Mm. You see, that's that was already that imagination that of uh, that relationship was already in my heart. Mm. Now, I think there's an element of truth in the following statement, and that uh, Islam uh, has not Islam, but Muslims have gone a bit off center when they make Allah so distant and so fearful, they cannot appreciate Him as their friend. And they cannot appreciate him set themselves as the friend of Allah. I mm. think this is a pitiful mistake. Mm. You see, it's not that we shouldn't fear Allah. Of course, we should fear Allah. It's the beginning of all wisdom. But after you uh, learn to fear Him, uh, then uh, you don't. You also learn not to earn His wrath. And mm. once you've learned not to earn His wrath, you become His friend. Mm. <laughs> you see, yeah. it's not that difficult a thing. It's very simple. And um, I think that, uh, you know, it, I, I, you, you see, this idea of being a friend of Allah, you know, it's, it's, it, it's, it's, you can say, oh, it's a bit childish, but hey, Isa said, unless you become as little children, you cannot enter the kingdom of God. Mm. And what is the kingdom of God? The kingdom of God is to have him as your friend so that he guides you to your destiny and purpose. You see, and that brings us full circle to walking with God in order to seek our destiny and purpose. You see, that's that's what Abraham was doing. He couldn't find it where he was. He couldn't find it in his father's house. He couldn't find it in his father's community. Uh, he had to go and find it. And where did he find it? He found it on a place called Mount Zion. And uh, there you have the, 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 the wind of God, the rule. It's spoken of in in the church. They they call it Moriah, uh, mm. in the in the uh, Al Torah, and this is where the friends of God would ascend. Well, it doesn't mean a literal mountain. Zion is not a literal mountain. It mm. is an imaginary transcendence. That's what it is. Mm. Mm. And so you 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 transcend uh, your preoccupation with materialism, with the earth, in which you are made. And by the way, women are not made from the earth. They're made from us, mm. you see. They're made from men. Mm. So that's a different, that's why we can't understand them so easily. They're, they're, we're made from earth. You see, men mm. are, are made from the earth. There's a difference in the, in the substance, the, the esoteric substance of the mm. manhood than there is from the woman. The woman is taken out of man and then she's a new creation, but she's not, you know, you know, people like to talk about Mother Earth, but you know, it's Earth is not a mother. Earth is a big pile of mud and rocks and you know, volcanic ash and fire and all this sort of thing. Uh, a woman isn't that at all. She's taken out of man. She's taken mm -hmm. out of the Earth, and she's something else uh, entirely. And so we have to. And what is this something else? Well, it's not man. And so what do we we ha but. Allah compels us to have a relationship with this thing called a woman, this thing mm. that we can't understand. And so what does that mean? Well, we can't understand Allah either. <laughs> you see, there's a reflection there. And since it is the man's responsibility to be uh, the caliph, if you will, it's his responsibility to come to terms with this compulsion to know his wife, because that's what the word is in the, the English concept of knowing your wife, of having the relationship with your wife. It's not just sex, it's knowing, it's called knowing. And so what does, the, what does the husband do? He knows his wife and she learns to know him. Well, he thinks he learns to know her. Well, we try, okay? Huh. That's, that's what we do, we try. And in this trying, we become closer and closer and more dependent upon each other. And 
this collective dependence has its own individual uh, responsibility. That's interesting purpose. because what you're saying to me, what I'm listening to is that you can have a relationship without actually knowing. <laughs> yes, saying. yes, you can. <laughs> yes, you can. And Allah, when, when Allah uh, uh, is walking with the Alawiyah, uh, he, they're knowing each other, mm. you see. And so now I've, I've been trying to walk with Allah for a number of years. And there are some things I really know about him now. Mm. Okay. There's no doubt in my mind. I know some things about the Sunnah of God. I know what he likes, what he doesn't like, and I know how he's going to react and how he's, how he's got, what's going to make him angry and what's going to make him pleased with me. Da, 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 da. And you learn the same thing with your spouse. Okay. So the, what Rumi and Al-Arabi uh, say about the marriage being a reflection of what some of the Christian saints have called Imako Dei, or the, the, the image of God, that's what marriage is. It's an image of God. Now, the saints try to do this without marriage, and you know, the Christian saints who try to do this without marriage, and it drives them crazy. They go out on a, 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 a limb, and I'm sure that there are some Sufi saints who've tried to do this uh, as well, pseudo Sufis, and you can't have a relationship with God without marriage. It doesn't doesn't happen. Mm. Um, you will have a relationship with some entity, but it will not be the guidance that you you think it will be. It mm. can it can it can mimic. You know, it, the, the jinn and uh, evilists are very good at mimicking God. They present themselves as angels, as angels of light. And then the moment you start get this spooky feeling about pe people, instead of talking to your grandpa and say, are we going to go fishing? He said, yeah, if Allah wills, uh, I mean, you know, at the moment they, you know, you start to get the spooky feeling uh, uh, with these people. They're not walking with God. I'm telling you right now, they're not walking with God because mm -hmm. The friends of God are also your friends, okay? Mm. Yeah, if you let them be your mm. friends. And they're very straightforward, very down to earth. There's nothing spooky about them. Uh, you know, they, they all go to the toilet and, you know, do whatever else we do. So I hope that uh, helps you to... Uh, yeah, just uh, to further uh, elaborate you know? on this issue sure, uh, sure. Of, of something you mentioned, very important, you use the word, uh, you know... Uh, Sheikh Dr. Israel in his tafsir, he talks about the flight of the alone, meaning man in his soul. Yes. Right. Yes. The flight of the alone to the alone. Meaning yes. the, the ruh is also, in a sense, alone, especially if it doesn't find like minded people sometimes. Yes. Yes. You know, yes. Even though you may have family around you, especially for scholars or uh, the Oliya Allah. Mm -hmm. Because of their relationship with Allah, they might find themselves all alone, even though they might yeah. be in a crowd, in mm. a sense, you know, or they might be around people who practice Islam, but it's not real yet. Uh, yeah, that's a that's a function of knowledge. That's a function of knowledge, and that's also a function. And knowledge is also a function of not just study but also experience. So uh, there are a lot of people amongst the alim who have a lot of knowledge, but they don't have a lot of the right experience. Mm -hmm. And the experience that they're missing is actually the walking on the earth. You see, uh, most, uh, most, uh, if you, if you look at this, the stories of most of your alim, they, they've never left school. You see, they've gone from, you know, grade school, primary school to grade school, high school, then, you know, theological school. And then they've gone right from theological school right to the masjid. They've mm -hmm. never worked, mm -hmm. you see. Uh, whereas uh, if you look at some of the greater the scholars, they, you know, look, look at Jelani. We don't know what he did when he's 25 years in the desert. We, <laughs> if you're going to spend 25 years in the desert, I can guarantee you, you're going to have to do some work out there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. a lot of walking. <laughs> yeah, a lot of walking. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, a lot of these people have not walked. And if you don't walk, you're not going to meet God. It's that simple. Okay. So do you recommend to somebody that is going through struggles in life or mm -hmm. even not that yeah. we should start walking and just reflecting and thinking and looking at the trees or, or like, you know, just talking uh, to Allah, like, what do we, do? okay, so yeah, I'm, I, I'm, do. I'm, I do, um, I do, I had a student uh, come to me not too long ago 
and um, he was relatively well off uh, financially. He had done run, done well in, in certain of his business uh, efforts, but he was still young, in his twenties, and uh, he had had only. It, he was hungry for this walk, you see, because all he'd done is gone to school. Then he'd gone to school, graduated, got his degree, got his training, then he went to work. And the, 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 the work, the environment in which you work, it was just like a glorified school. And so he was producing something and it made some money and it made a lot of money. Uh, and then he said, uh, you know, but I'm still looking for something. I don't know what I'm looking for. I said, well, you know, if, you're, if you can take time off and go and see the world, then do it. Mm. You see, there was a time not too long ago, a couple hundred years ago, even a hundred years ago or so, where uh, a young man would uh, uh, say, Dad, I, you know, I want to join the Navy, I want to join the Merchant Marine, or I, I'm going to join the Army, or I'm going to, you know, go to Tibet or someplace. There's, I got I to gotta see the world. Mm. I've got to walk. Okay. Mm. I've got a sail, you know, a sailor on the ship, he's still walking. Mm. Uh, he's just walking on the water, if you will. Yeah. So um, and that, the, the, the thing of it is, it's a journey. And in this journeying, you meet uh, the challenges of the world and you see how it is that uh, people interact and how they don't interact and what the world has to offer and what it doesn't have to offer. And you see how you react to it. Mm. You see, you see how you react to it with and without God's grace. And that's mm. an important uh, uh, circumstance. And you also uh, see how you react to the world when you are alone. Mm. Okay, a stranger in a strange land, because mm. that is what uh, this aloneness that the sheikh was talking about is 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 it with the earth is a strange land mm. you know there's what is this full of beauty and wonder and all of all this wonderful creation it's unmatched okay and, and, and man cannot match it uh, but there's still this aloneness here that we have and what is this aloneness so this aloneness is the search for purpose once you find your purpose you're never alone again mm. you see because when you are fulfilling your purpose, you're constantly asking God, what's next? Mm. Okay, how do I complete the next task? Help me. I, you know, I need your guides. And, you know, I, I find myself talking to the angels all, all, all the time. And uh, I, I'll, I'll make a door and I expect the angel to give, give me an answer. I really expect it, you see, mm. because I have been answered before. And I have this uh, relationship with Allah in that sense because I have been alone. And I, in, that, in that aloneness, I found my purpose, you see. Mm. And then you have a different kind of aloneness that is this social aloneness that you're talking about. This social aloneness has to do with the knowledge that you gain, both by reading uh, research and by living these different experiences. So uh, this is, you know, there's nothing wrong with using yourself an example. I, I'm quite an interesting example. Some people say I should write a biography. Look, I have done all kinds of work, well, whatever it took. <laughs> well, whatever it took to put rice in my bowl, I did it. Changed truck tires, flipped burgers, delivered milk, you know, delivered papers. I've been a doctor. I've, you know, been a soldier. I, I, you name it, I've done it. Mm. Now, how many Alim do you know that have that kind of experience? Mm. No, no, they, you, you, they, almost all of them have had their head in a book mm. you know, all their life. Mm. Now, you're not going to find Allah in that capacity, in the capacity that I'm talking about, in a book. Hmm. You'll, you'll, you'll get some knowledge about him, you'll learn some of the history of the Sunnah, but you're not going to develop that relationship simply by sitting with a book. You've hmm. got to get out there and walk. Hmm. Hey, man, where are you going? What, what's a, what's a, the, the Australian man doing? He said, I'm going to walk about, man. Bye. I'll be back. When are you coming back? I don't know. Hmm. When it's finished. 
<laughs> the Irishman said, I'll see you next year. When? I don't know. When I get here. You see? It'll be a good time. Okay, see you then. I'm going to walk in. I'm going to walk about. The, 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 the Australian Aborigine talks about this. The, the, native, the natives all over the world. Where's he gone? He's gone walking. Okay. When a man goes hunting, you know, the, we got the great white hunter, what's he, he's, he's actually wants to leave society and he's trying to get closer to God. Most of these guys are trying to get closer to God, but they're, they become so uh, inbred uh, culturally that they don't even know what they're trying to do. Hmm. So they just go out there and they kill something. They so say, the purpose of the man they, cave is to like <laughs> find your time with God. Well, it can be. It, it can be. It, 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 is, it is a time of aloneness. Now, the prophet had his man cave, but it was a literal cave. Right. And yeah. most, most of the prophets also had their caves, you know, um, and you read this over and over again. And the idolaters, their shamans, they also have their caves, you know. Um, and this is a time when you sit and you contemplate and you're, you're, looking, for, you're looking for God. And uh, I think one of the one of the prophets uh, uh, asked to see God. Said, "No, you can't. You can't see me, but I'll let you see my backside." You know what Whatever that means, I, I don't have any insight on that. But they weren't in, sitting in the city, and they weren't sitting in a basement. They weren't sitting in some room in a castle. They were out in the wilderness, someplace. Mm. When when the the young Sioux warrior goes out to seek his vision to find out what his purpose in life is, how he's going to meet his destiny, he goes out into the wilderness. He climbs mm. a mountain, he fasts, he prays for three or four days, and then he expects the world of the spirit to give him a vision that's going to explain himself to himself. Mm. Okay. Now, he's not necessarily looking for God to explain himself. He wants to know what God wants him to do. Now, that's, that means he's going into the vision search already with the purpose in mind. Mm. You see, he's already informed because his elders have already guided him. He said, well, mm. if you want to find out what God wants you to do, you got to go ask him. And here's how we ask him. Okay. Now, there's different ways of, you know, doing this but per religion. Uh, and uh, Islam has your own way of doing this to, as well. But... Uh, it's not sitting someplace just with your nose in a book. I can tell you that. So uh, what would you say about the verse of the Quran where Allah says, وَإِبَادُ Rahman and the servants of the most merciful. And what I'm trying to emphasize here is the quality of servants of the most merciful, right? So that وَإِبَادُ الرَّحْمَنِ الَّذِينَ يَمْشُونَ عَلَى الْأَرْضِ حَوْنَ And they walk on the earth in a humble manner. Yes. So again, here you find the idea of believers being described with the trait of walking yeah. and also with the trait of the servants of the most merciful. Yes. And, uh, you know, walking on the earth in a humble way. Uh, yes. So I find that, you know, this theme when I was thinking about it, when I was in this camping site, this theme of walking, hmm. really, when I looked into the Quran, I found walking all of a sudden <laughs> in places <laughs> I never thought it was there, you know. Yes, yes. And, and so I was like, okay, this is significant. So mm. we, need to, we need to like literally like walk with Allah in a sense, not just physically, but emotionally, intellectually, uh, and also physically. Yes, physically. Um, and now that I'm here in Kentucky and I have this little bit of uh, uh, what I call the promised land, these little five acres that uh, Allah has given to myself and sister Amina, um, it's much easier to, to listen. It's much easier to communicate. Um, and I sometimes, you know, I just walk down to the pond and walk back and on the way I'll meet a duck or, you know, a fish or an owl fly by or something. And all of these things are reminding me of Allah's mercy and they also, it also keeps you oh. humble. I want, I want to turn you, I want to turn back to this idea of humility, you see, because it's awfully, it's awesome uh, to be in such a situation. 
you've heard me say, that, you know, I'm the only guy I know. I can go any place in the world and have everything I need given to me. And it's just been proven once again here mm -hmm. in Kentucky. Absolutely amazing. I'm confounded uh, by it. But the thing of it is, is that when you become the friend of God, you know, it's not, it's, it's not a thing of, you know, having water pull out of your hand and all these miracles and all this sort of thing. Yeah, that can happen, but that's what, what Allah wants to do with a certain individual. That's what he maybe did with the prophet and, uh, and he did other miracles with other people, but Allah does what he wants with whomever he pleases in whatever manner he chooses, you see. So it's not our choice. People get confused with making uh, a choice. They say, oh, I want to do this. I'm going to do this for God. And you know, the first thing I, I say when I hear that I, to myself, I say, did, did you decide that or did Allah decide that? I mean, who are you t telling God what you want to do? Uh, or are you asking him what does he want you to do? That's the difference between pride and humility, you see, it's, it's a different. And in the al Torah, when it refers to Abraham walking with God, Abraham is, it says he was a friend of God because he was the most humble mm. of the men in mm. that land. Okay. Mm. Now, the word that's used, that's translated in English, humble, uh, I don't remember the original uh, Hebrew word, but it has as its root uh, teachable. Oh, now there's a mystery, you see, that's uh, being revealed here in this mm. conversation. Abraham was the most teachable man mm. because right. he was humble. So he was really taking go. the lessons. Yeah. So yeah. if you're if you're not humble, you're not teachable. If you're going out there saying, oh, I'm going to go teach the world this, I've got, you know, I've got a handle on everything. And then you get up on your own podium uh, rather than let, uh, let Allah put you on the stage or whatever the case might be, you're, you're, you're committing the sin of pride. And this is where division occurs because uh, what happens is it's, it leads directly to sectarianism because mm -hmm. pride causes division. Mm -hmm. And then you get people who are too proud to admit that they've made mistakes. Mm -hmm. I've met all kinds of Muslims uh, in and out of the uh, 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 academia, in and out of the masjid that have refused to admit their mistakes, refused it. Even when they're bold faced, caught in a lie, they still refuse to admit that they're wrong. Mm. See, you can't be a friend of God when you're doing that. Right. So what does, what does Allah do? Is he going to walk with you? Well, mm. it, no, he says, he's gonna, well, the guys, he's gonna, what happens is, uh, allegorically, you know, I'm just going to paint imagination here, is Allah said, no, I'm not walking with him. He's not walking with me. Mm. Right? That's not my walk. That's not the way I walk. Now, mm. have you seen a, a child walk, a little child, two, three, four-year-old boy, walk down the street exactly like his father walks? Okay. Mm. That's, what, that's what Allah wants. Allah wants us to be like him. Allah wants us to walk as he would walk. Okay, he wants us to walk as his servants would walk and his mm. servants are the most humble and the most teachable. They are not proud people. Uh, so uh, the moment you get uh, people, you know, defending a sect and, you know, oh, I'm from this mountain, I'm from that mountain. And then they start, you know, they pull out their daggers and they start verbally fighting with each other. And they still can't agree on how to pray after 1400 years. They're lost. Allah's not walking with them. Okay, mm. it's real simple. Uh, so the kid who's, you know, you, you, you've seen, the, I, I see there's a one favorite photo I have on one of the backdrops for my computer. It's a couple of men walking down the street. Uh, they're obviously close friends, obviously co close companions, and they're walking with their heads bowed and their hands are clasped behind their back and they're mm. deep in thought, deep in conversation. And behind them is a little four-year-old boy. And he's obviously one of the uh, uh, sons uh, uh, of the, and he's walking exactly like them. 
<laughs> okay. Yes, that yes. is what that is what the Sunna is all about. It's not about how many times you pray, it's not about how many alhamdulillahs you say so that you can plant another tree in paradise. None of that. It's how you walk uh, in the same manner that the prophets walked. Not mm -hmm. just Muhammad, but all of them. We honor all of them, you see. So uh, now you asked me an in interesting question uh, the last time uh, we, we, you spoke, we spoke, and you're talking about the authorities and land where you are. So Amina and I, we're in a strange land. We're strangers in a strange land. And what we're doing, we're learning to walk like these people, you see. Uh, you see, you've seen a picture of me with a little, you know, army straw hat and all that sort of thing. I'm, I'm beginning, I'm learning to walk like them in order to show them that I'm not too proud, okay? Mm. And that I'm not uh, in opposition to their particular approach to life and that I'm honoring their way of life because Allah has placed me in this place in their center in order to protect my purpose in him. Mm. Why should I pull out the Quran and start hitting them over the head with it? You know, no, mm. no, 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 that's, that's not the Sunnah. The Sunnah is something quite different. The Sunnah is Amana, is trust. And so to walk with Allah means that you have to be known as somebody who can be trusted. You see, and this is where Islam began. It began with the prophet. Uh, I mean, the Islam we have today, the, the, the beginning of Islam's completion, you see, mm -hmm. in Muhammad, yeah. uh, if I want to be more scientifically uh, precise. Yeah. Um, the big, it began with trust. He was mm -hmm. called the trusted one. Mm -hmm. The trusted one. Everyone trusted him. Friend of God and enemy of God, they all trusted him, you see. Right. So... Uh, this is who you want to be when it comes to people saying, well, what's that guy doing? Oh, he's walking with God. <laughs> okay. He's a trusted one. You can trust him. Yeah. Don't worry. Don't worry about Dr. Omar. He's going to be all right. He's going to be all right. You can tell him anything. He'll keep your confidence or, you know, you give him something to keep for you. He's going to keep it. That's how, that's how the prophet was. So now taking this conversation from the individual to the their verse in the Quran, Ya Ayyuhal Nafsul Mutma in O you uh, contented soul, so to say. Because we were talking about walking is also part of it is returning. You mentioned yes, this yes, yes, journey yes. of life, so to say, right? Mm -hmm. So O contented soul, irji'i ila rabbika, uh, go back to your Rabb your Lord. Yes. He is happy with you. You're happy yes. with him. But the part that always made me think, okay, why? Why did Allah say this? Okay, so then he says, uh, enter into my garden, into the garden, into your garden, yes. right? right. And, uh, and enter with my servants. So this okay. part where enter with my servants Mm -hmm. I found always like, okay, what was the, what is the, what does this have to do with our journey? Like back to Allah, can we go back home to Jannah? And Allah yeah. is saying, enter into my garden and enter with my servants, my slaves. Yes. Uh, any thoughts on that? Yes. Well, a couple of thoughts. One is that the, the entire purpose of walking is to return to our Rabb. Okay. That's the whole purpose of walking. Uh, and along, uh, while we're walking, we're also uh, physically, emotionally, intellectually, uh, spiritually maturing, okay? Mm -hmm. And so we, we, we hope to get to that point where we're uh, spiritually mature enough to become uh, Allah's friend. And Allah is going to invite us uh, back to the garden, that's the return. So the whole walk on earth is the initiation and the continuance of this return, you mm. see. So 
if uh, uh, that that means you know so if you're walking one way you're walking towards a god uh, towards allah if you're walking the other way you're walking away from him uh so it's a kind of a you know you can think of it in those those terms but the other thing that uh, occurred to me here is that um the the friend oh no i lost my train of thought i just did that in any case um so i was mentioning that okay so one is returning back to allah and then allah yeah. specifically mentions and go back to my servants like uh, yeah. enter into your garden and with my servants and so this kind of like are these people that you met along the way in the journey of life so to say and allah is like okay well maybe. oh now it comes back to me thank you you sparked it See, uh, the Prophet said at one point, we will tie this in with another hadith that, uh, 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 that uh, really uh, touched me when I heard it. Uh, the Prophet uh, said something to the effect that in, on the Day of Judgment, uh, people who followed so-and-so are going to follow such, are going to follow so-and-so wherever they go, and, and so forth and so on. Which means that if so-and-so goes to hell, the people who followed him are going to hell with him, you see. Um, and so the servant that you are following is the one that you're entering with, with my servant in mm -hmm. that respect. That, that's, that's what I think it might mean. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I'm, I'm just, I'm kind of guessing here, but that's what came to me when you mentioned it, mm -hmm. um, uh, with my servant, because who are the servants? The servants are the Aluya, and these are whom we call the saints or the prophets or uh, the uh, other terms that we use for the friends of uh, Allah throughout all of the centuries, all, all of them, you see, uh, not just <coughs> the ones we consider to be Muslim, you see. So every country, every nation in history, throughout history, the history we know and the history that we don't know, they have had their prophets, they've had their servants, okay? Um, so that when... Um, uh, for example, Jacob became known as Israel. He, when he repented, he became known as Israel. And then the Torah calls Israel his firstborn. Uh, and it says, this is my firstborn son. Um, so what does that mean? It means in a sense that Allah uh, then appointed Israel to tame the promised land. Okay, this is, a, this is an archetypal story. Mm. to rid the land of idolatry mm. rid the land of what rid the land of people who are not walking with god <laughs> mm. that's what it was about israel never did that they're still not doing it but they're claiming they are you see <laughs> so uh that's so uh the the thing here is that those people became the people of israel Okay, and they're still using that term. So that's the 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 the, the Juma of uh, Israel of Jacob, if you will. Every nation under the sun, in history and non-history, has such a person attached to them as their leader, as their as the servant right, of Allah. Right, right. Okay. So when we when we then enter into the garden with my servant that's probably the attachment that's the association that's being made mm. i i think it's most likely i i, I don't mm. know because i'm not a scholar in that uh, sense but it seems it makes sense to me yeah yeah uh like in fatiha guide us to the straight path the path of those now again in fatiha yeah, same thing. there it is there it is right? yes guide us and, to the straight path. so it's like and, and there, there, yeah and and you see it here we say it so many times every day uh, may the peace and blessings of Allah be upon Muhammad and his and his servants and all those who followed him, as it was upon Ibrahim and his family and all those who followed him. Mm -hmm. So the Turk and who is Ibrahim? Ibrahim was the one who walked with Allah. You see, he mm -hmm. walked with God. It was his friend. And who was Muhammad? Muhammad completed the covenant, mm -hmm. and he brought the kingdom that Isa spoke of. Right. He right. said the kingdom of the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Mm -hmm. It's going to incarnate at the earth. Wait for the trusted one. He's coming. Mm -hmm. He's coming. All right. He's right behind me. Okay. And right. so and it's reflected. That's why Al-Fatiha is such a perfect prayer. 
because the whole archetype is in Altatia. It's all in that prayer. When I read that prayer, I was astounded. You understand? I oh, was wow. absolutely astounded when I read wow. that prayer because I already understood a lot about the archetypes in oh. throughout the Judeo-Christian scriptures. So that, and then when I came to 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 realize that the the Quran came to complete what was sent before, <laughs> then I said, "Oh my God, yeah, well, it's certainly doing that for me. It completed." <laughs> my knowledge because I, 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 there was a set of knowledge that i had but it was incomplete and it wasn't completed until i read the quran and the so, moment i saw that completion then i became a muslim you see it did not guide me to the straight path the path of those whom you favored so again you have the journey and then you have the servants of god yes. in yeah. that journey so to say yeah yeah and, so and you have a path thing. that has to be walked and you have a path that has to be walked yes there it yeah. is <laughs> and uh so that's that's subhanallah it's very interesting yes. and for some of us that will be making part of that walk will be a specific type of walk like making a hijrah right yes it can and, be and and it can so that's you know part of, because when the prophet made the hijrah he made a statement he said in the mal'amalu bin niyat actions are only by intentions so whoever made the hijrah for Allah and his messenger, he made hijrah for Allah and his messenger, meaning he was, he was, his, his hijrah was for Allah, meaning the same, it's not very different from walking with God. Right? Of course. And then, mm -hmm. There are two different versions of this narration. Either he gets a portion, so he made hijrah, so he'll get some portion of the world or that he'll marry a lady. So his walking or his hijrah was for what he did his yes. hijrah for. Yes, that's the other aspect. That's the other aspect, you see, of the path. You're mm. either on the path that's straight, that's leading to your destiny, or you're on another path, and that's the path of your nafs, you see. Mm. And you can't be on both. You can't be on both. No. If because your your intention in order to become the, the humble friend of Allah, you have to have to constantly. This is not this is not something that's just done one time and it's finished. No, you have to constantly be, be overcoming enough, overcoming any cat. Const repentance, tauba is something that is daily. It's daily. Mm -hmm. It's not something you just uh, you know say. Oh, I've made it. I'm I'm a saint now. No, <laughs> no, it doesn't. It doesn't happen. No. Hey, I made it to the top. I'm you know I'm top build here on you know Broadway. No, no, it's not like that. The 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 naya the naya has got to be correct. And if the naya is incorrect, you're not going to meet your destiny. You will meet a fate. But it won't be it won't be your destiny. There's a difference, yes. and uh, the the Ummah has become subject to fatalism, mm. and that's not the same as meeting one's purpose. You mm. see, you're, if you're if you're subject to fatalism and it's a you know it's a it's a sort of sort of a cursed state, you haven't met your purpose. You see, even if you meet your purpose in a desolate uh, position, you'll know and you'll you'll still have asakina. You see, I mean, look, some of the prophets were, were tortured and murdered. They still met their purpose and they met their death in a spirit of Asakina. Mm. There, there are soldiers that went to the death, brave and courage, courageous and at peace, you know, who, had been, who were uh, sold out as traitors and they weren't traitors, but they knew they weren't. They knew they made, did their best and they knew they met their destiny and they went to their death in peace. You mm. see, so um, Nia has everything to do with walking with God, right? And it's up to God, you know, how it is up to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala how your destiny plays out. It's not up to you. Mm. Your Nia may be to do such and such, and Allah says, "Okay, I'll take you in that direction." But once you get there, I'm going to do another thing. <laughs> and then he's gonna he's gonna slap you in the face and say okay now what you still my servant <laughs> you still love me what do you think now sucker huh yeah. <laughs> you know um so you this is this says this is the element of manhood that uh comes into 
fruition with the courage of accepting one's destiny and accepting the circumstances, knowing that you've done your best. People who die in fear are afraid of the second death because they haven't done their best. Their nia is not correct, mm. you see? And there are others who run to their death thinking that they're, you know, uh, uh, going that they're serving God. I mean, Christians have done this too. Oh, well, we're going to go save Jerusalem, and uh, along the way, oh yeah, well, so I raped about thirty innocent women, and I don't know how many kids. I, but the Pope said I'm free of sin. So mm -hmm. yeah, no, this false religious teaching. There's false religious teaching in the Oma too, and men are trying thinking they're fooled into thinking that they've done their best to serve God under those circumstances, you see. So Nia has everything to do with uh, walking with God and with accepting uh, God's judgment, not your own. And you can say, oh, well, geez, I thought it was right. Well, God said, you, you were right, but you're, you're going to die now. And these are the circumstances. Are you ready? Uh, mm -hmm. well, of course. Well, you know, what choice do I have? <laughs> 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 yeah, you know, <laughs> so um, Nia, it means servant, it means slave, it means you're at his service, mm. you see, and that's how we have to place ourselves even in our relationship with our spouses, we have to be at their service, because that is a reflection of the, our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, mm. you see. Uh, and that's so why a lot of people are in a relationship to see what they can take. So we have to all be in a relationship to, to see what we can give. There you go. There right. you go. And it's giving and the taking. It balances out and it's continual. It's continual. Yeah. If you're in a relationship and, you know, it's all take and you're, you're doing all the giving, you know, uh, uh, you know, it might be that, uh, Allah is still going to be with you, but it, it could also be that Allah is testing you. Say how much you could, how much, how how stupid are you? You see, you know, are you really that stupid? You're going to stay in that relationship all this time? Mm. You know, I don't like divorce, but you know, I don't like you to see you suffer either. Islam is supposed to make it easy, I'm not supposed to make it things difficult. Mm. You see, and I see a lot of relationships where people are just being abused right and left, and uh, especially the women. And uh, then they become bitter. The women become embittered and they, they turn to be abuser, abusers themselves and without even right. realizing yeah, it. Yeah, actually, that's so true. Yeah, without so, realizing it. And that happens in the medical profession. When I was training, you know, there were doctors who came up before me and said, look, I did it. You got to do it. Mm. You know, <laughs> that's, that's not justice. <laughs> it doesn't. It's also irrational. <laughs> you see, but uh it, it makes people makes people bitter so the the more we reflect our relationship with allah in our relationship with our spouses the better off we are in our companionship with allah right so an example of that is forgive your wife or forgive your husband and allah will mm -hmm. forgive you like that's there a very basic one right? yes yes there you go yeah the the mercy is endless as long as the Nia and uh, the Tauba is sincere. But then, you know, if you have these borderline personalities and they're just, you know, pretending to be sincere, then you got a problem. You got to suss them out. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'll tell you how to suss them out. Because the people that Allah wants in your life to help you meet the destiny, they always put a smile on your face, peace in your heart, and something in your pocket. Mm -hmm. Okay. They're always going to tell you the truth as well, no matter how, how hard it hurts. Okay. So you remember those four things and you'll, then you'll know who is going to help you meet mm. your destiny and who is opposing it. Sometimes mm. you meet your destiny because of the opposition, but once you, once you realize that this person is in opposition to your destiny, then you cut them loose, you cut them free. And that's also a test. You say, no, no, you know, it's like, a, uh, it, well, look, it's like this. You know, the divorce is uh, three times. The first two, you get back together, no problem. You come back to the third time, you reunion again. But if you divorce a third time, 
you can't marry her again unless she marries somebody else. Okay, there's no uh, there's no ands ifs or buts about it. It's pretty cut cut and dry. Okay, yeah. so when you're cutting somebody off after the third insult, you know I'll, I'll, it's a test of your judgment. It's a test of manhood. It's a test of womanhood. How mm. much abuse you're going to put up with? Well, you're stupid. That's you know mature people don't put up with abuse. You see. No, mature p- person said, the warrior stands there and said, no more. You cross that line, off with your head. Mm. Okay. You cross that line, your allowance is cut off. You cross that line, I'm divorcing you. Okay. It's real simple. Okay. And that goes both ways. It goes for the wife to the husband as well. You cross that line, I'm divorcing you. Okay. Mm. So um, I, I don't see any, I don't see any preference uh, in the chauvinist sense. In, in that sense, in, in, in the relationship there. Uh, so the, the, the idea here is to be firm in your near, mm. is to be firm in your intention. So if you're going to serve Allah, then you, you're firm in that intention, uh, in that intention but you're also uh, uh, magnanimous, you're forgiving, because Allah is most merciful and all forgiving. But there comes a time when Allah cuts people off. Mm. And there's a, there, there comes a time when you have to cut people off too. I've done mm. that several times. And uh, the people who are still joined to me are the people, some people uh, that I've cut off and they've come back, mm. you see? Because that's what Allah did with Adam, cut him off, you see? Cut him off. And then Adam came back, you see, in repentance. And that's how it is. That's what the prodigal did. He, he cut himself off from God in, the, in the, the story of the prodigal son. And then he repented. Did he repent it out of a sincere feeling? Yeah, he repented out of desperation. Well, that's better than no repentance, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so. Okay, inshallah, I think we have a good hour or more a little bit for today. I think yes, the I'll, I'll whole topic of walking with God is a very interesting topic. And it, I think it was, it was good. Alhamdulillah, Allah allowed us to talk. Alhamdulillah. About it. Yeah. 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 I, I, I enjoyed uh, this discussion. It was very lively. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. Okay. Jazakumullah khairan. Inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Wa salam alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.